Number 10. Arizona Bark Scorpion The Arizona Bark Scorpion is one of the most dangerous bugs in North America, and it might be hiding in your own backyard. That's right, depending on where you live, it might be hiding out under a rock or in a dark basement, ready to strike if you come too close. This species of scorpion is native to the Sonoran Desert, though, so it's going to be most prevalent in the southwest. It's a small scorpion, light brown, and tremendously frightening. The bark scorpion mostly comes out at night to hunt for roaches and spiders. This is the time that you're most likely to encounter one of these deadly creatures. Because they have such poor eyesight, bark scorpions usually travel along the baseboards of people's homes searching for a meal, and during the day, they go into hiding spots to rest. These hiding spots can include cracks in the walls, dark places underneath your steps, and even in your shoes. But here's the deal. Bark scorpions typically want to avoid humans. Most stings are accidental. If you happen upon one while it's resting, you'd better keep your distance, or chances are that it's going to sting you. If the scorpion accidentally finds you during the evening and you startle it, it will probably also sting. And if you get stung by a bark scorpion, there is a chance you could die. It is rare, with only two recorded fatalities in Arizona because of bark scorpions since the 1960s. However, it is possible. Infants and the elderly are the ones most in danger from the scorpion's venom. But even if you don't die from getting stung by the Arizona bark scorpion, it still leaves a painful mark that can have you screaming and rolling on the floor in agony. Number 9. Ticks Ticks are some of the most dangerous bugs in the world, even though they aren't poisonous at all. They are also some of the most overlooked pests in North America. These awful little insects feed on just about anything living that has blood in it, including mice, people, and even birds. The tick is able to transmit at least 15 diseases. That's what the CDC says, and they are on point here. The most common disease transmitted through a tick is Lyme disease. But there's also fatal infections that can damage your neurological system, like the Powassan virus. A tick bite can even cause you to become allergic to red meat. Although, if you're already a vegetarian or vegan, that one probably isn't so bad. Would you even be bothered with an allergy to red meat? Tell us in the comments below. If you're not sure what a tick is, they're pretty disturbing looking little pests. Ticks are kind of like bed bugs. There are about 900 species of them, with the deer tick being the most prevalent and one of the most dangerous. There's also the American dog tick that's known for spreading Rocky Mountain spotted fever. Ticks are small, they have flat bodies, and they've got eight little legs. They can live for up to three years, but need blood from an animal host to progress through their life cycle. They literally suck blood to keep growing. And even more terrifying is that after a female has a healthy meal of blood, she can lay up to 18,000 eggs. But how exactly does one of these little bugs give you a disease? It burrows into your skin. It literally cuts your skin open and then stuffs its body inside of you, secreting a type of natural glue so that it stays in place. Then, if it happens to be carrying certain bacteria or viruses, you can catch them from the tiny creature. The only way to get rid of one of these things is to physically rip it out of your flesh. Ugh, gross. Number 8. Yellow Sack Spiders The yellow sack spider is one of the creepiest arachnids anywhere in the world. It has a gross yellow body, tinged kind of green. It also has dark legs and is only about a quarter of an inch, making one of these pretty difficult to spot. But like all spiders, they are known to wander through open doors or windows, at which point they will infest a person's home. They also like to get away from the cold during the winter, sneaking into people's houses and setting up shop. But just how dangerous is this ugly bug? Well, you definitely don't want to get bitten by one. A bite from a yellow sack spider is extremely painful. Not only that, but their bite can be necrotic. What this means is that the venom delivered through the spider's fangs can damage and kill your skin tissue. It essentially makes your skin start to rot. It's highly unlikely that you would die from a yellow sack spider, but the last thing anyone wants is necrotic skin because of a spider bite. These bites usually heal extremely slowly while being itchy for a few days or even weeks. To make things worse, yellow sack spiders are known for getting trapped in bed sheets and clothing. If you happen to crawl into a bed at night and there's a sack spider under your sheets, chances are pretty good that you're going to get bitten. Oh yeah, and they live in almost all of the continental United States. Stay vigilant, people. Number 7. Giant Wasps 
giant wasps are truly bugs that must be feared. There is no better example of how dangerous giant wasps can be than when mortified tourists witness them literally murder someone in Thailand. It all happened when a local Thai tour guide took a French couple sightseeing into the wilderness of Chiang Mai on a Saturday afternoon. But the group accidentally disturbed a giant wasp hive during their jungle hike. Thousands of angry hornets roared out of the nest and swarmed the guide, and the tourists watched helplessly as they stung him all across his body. The man screamed and panicked and collapsed on the ground, and the French tourists fled in fear as the hornets began chasing them as well. They managed to get away and were rescued and taken to a hospital, but their guide was not so lucky. By the time the police arrived at the scene and found him, his body was swollen like a balloon, according to the local police lieutenant. Authorities said he probably suffered from an anaphylactic shock and died almost instantly. Even more disturbing is that when the police found his body, he was being feasted on by the giant wasps. The police even had to fumigate the area to get rid of the wasps before they could retrieve the guy's body. That's how terrifying these insects really are. And in case you were wondering, these are indeed the infamous Asian killer hornets, which possess neurotoxin capable of killing humans. Does that story make you reluctant to go visit Thailand? Tell me if you're scared now. Why or why not? Let me know in the comments below. Then remember to subscribe to Taltanic if you haven't already for more intense videos. Number 6. Toe Biting Water Bugs The giant water bug is one of the weirdest insects on the planet. The water bug is huge, it has piercing mouth parts that it uses to bite, and the biggest water bug that's ever been recorded is over 4.5 inches or 12 centimeters. That's shockingly large for a simple bug. They live throughout marshes in North America, they can be found in pools and streams all across the world, and they spend much of their time hanging out near the surface of the water. They also have an exceptional means of reproduction in which the male giant water bug will carry the eggs of its offspring on its back until they hatch, something not done by many other insects. But why is the water bug so dangerous? It's not toxic and it can't kill. What it can do is bite your toes. That's why water bugs are often nicknamed toe biters. If you've ever had your feet dangling in a body of water and all of a sudden something bites your toe, it was probably a water bug. They can give an extremely painful bite that won't soon be forgotten, though there's never actually been a recorded death because of a water bug. They're simply not that dangerous, only annoying. Number 5. Guinea Worm the guinea worm is a disgusting menace and the largest of any tissue parasite that's dangerous to humans. It's actually a parasitic bug that causes a disease by the same name. A single adult female worm is able to carry at least 3 million embryos and grow to be as long as 30 inches. When you get infected by this worm, it moves throughout your bodily tissues, even in your joints where it causes severe pain. In most cases, the worm will ultimately burst out of your foot, causing tremendous agony. Victims are left with an ugly blister, a dangerous fever, and symptoms such as nausea and vomiting. This is honestly the most disgusting parasitic worm in the world, and not something you want to become infected with. It rarely kills, but can still make its victims sick for months at a time. And if you're wondering how to avoid the guinea worm, simply don't drink from pond water. The larva can flow into your system when you drink contaminated water. According to the World Health Organization, it takes about 100 days for the male and female larva to grow and meet each other, at which point the female becomes filled with potential babies and she begins wriggling through your muscles, looking for an easy place to burst out of your skin so that she can release her larva and keep the cycle of life going. Gross. Number 4. Killer Caterpillar There is a caterpillar out there that can make you bleed to death with a single touch. It's a unique type of bug found primarily in Brazil. Its scientific name is the Lonomia obliqua, though it's known casually as the Assassin Caterpillar. Unlike most caterpillars, this one does not look very furry or cuddly. Instead, it almost looks like it's covered in tiny trees but at the tip of each little tree is a point which can release venom into your body. It's basically covered in venomous barbs. If you were to prick your finger on this caterpillar, you could end up dying. And to make matters even more dangerous, its spikes are clustered in groups so that you're guaranteed to get stabbed more than once. When that happens, the venom enters your bloodstream in such an abundant amount 
that you can start to internally bleed. You almost immediately see bruises forming on your skin, you'll experience intense pain, and you'll probably get a headache and start vomiting, and after about a day, your blood will have overclotted and caused you to essentially bleed out from the inside. It's a pretty horrendous way to go, especially since all you did was accidentally touch a caterpillar. Number 3. Bulldog Ant According to the Guinness World Records, the bulldog ant is the most dangerous ant in the entire world. This terrifying bug can be found in the coastal regions of Australia, of course, where it attacks humans using both its stinger and its jaws at the same time. Since 1936, there have been at least three fatalities from the bulldog ant, with the most recent being in 1988. And while three obviously isn't a huge number, that's still a pretty shocking amount of people to be killed by measly ants. The bulldog ant got its name because of its uncanny determination during an assault. The ant is wildly and almost irrationally aggressive, showing no fear of humans and stinging as many times as possible while stuffing you full of venom with each rapid bite. The ant holds on with its mandibles for dear life and stings, stings, stings. An attack by bulldog ants can kill a man within 15 minutes. Of course, you could probably just run away and jump in the water, but if you happen to fall asleep on top of their nest, <laughs> yeah, you're toast. Number 2. Murder Mosquitoes Entomologist May Berenbaum from the University of Illinois recently said that people are scared of the wrong insects. There was a huge uproar lately when it became clear that murder hornets had moved into Washington state. But according to this entomologist, the real insect we should all be worried about is the mosquito. Mosquitoes kill millions of people every year by transmitting malaria and dengue fever, according to the World Health Organization. In the United States alone, the CDC reported at least 15 people killed from eastern equine encephalitis, a very rare disease transmitted by, you guessed it, mosquitoes. And that was only in 2020. But get ready to have your mind blown. Forget about coronavirus, the flu, the black plague, or any other disease known to mankind. CBS News reported that the mosquito has killed an estimated 50 billion people throughout human existence. That is a shocking number of deaths, and almost unbelievable. And yet, there is basically nothing being done to fight against the dreaded mosquito. Even in 2020, malaria continued to kill 1,100 people a day, and nobody talked about it. When compared to the murder hornet, which kills about a dozen people a year or less, the mosquito really is the destroyer of worlds, and it's just a measly little insect. Number 1. Stink Bugs Stink bugs came from Asia to Pennsylvania back in 1996 and are now everywhere, basically throughout the entire world. These horrible pests earned their name because of how stinky they are. If you disturb a stink bug, expect to get a nose full of reek. And if you think you're being clever and crush a stink bug, expect even more reek. These bugs creep into people's houses late in the summer and early in the autumn, when temperatures outside start to plummet, and yeah, they stink the place up. These grayish bugs have triangular bodies that look kind of like shields. They are less than an inch, and they aren't actually that dangerous. Instead, they're just very stinky. It's recommended that you avoid handling a stink bug, or really getting anywhere near a stink bug, unless you want your house to smell like rotten eggs. The biggest danger posed by the stink bug is when it infests your home. This can be an absolute nightmare because they breed like crazy and attract even more bugs, like venomous spiders who follow them inside to feast on them. The next thing you know, your house stinks like gas, there are stink bugs crawling along your windowsills, and poisonous spiders are now making webs right above your head where you sleep. Number 10. Anaconda Monster While the BBC film crew was filming a new series called Tribe in the Amazon jungle, they stumbled upon something horrific. Of course, pretty much everything in the Amazon can kill you, and the team knew the risks they were taking. But they still weren't ready to meet a giant snake measuring over 17 feet or 5 meters in length. This is one of the strangest and most terrifying monsters ever caught in the Amazon. The enormous, slithering creature is believed to be one of the biggest ever captured. 
The snake was part of a catch and release program to help scientists better understand what's going on with the Amazon's largest predator in the midst of deforestation and oil exploration. The serpent was tracked down with help from the secluded Warani tribe in Ecuador. This ancient tribe still lives in the rainforest and survives by catching wild pigs and monkeys with blowpipes and sharp sticks. They're also quite proficient in catching river monsters. Luckily for everyone involved, the snake was captured and released, and nobody was injured during the event. Though the Warani did say that the anaconda is one of the deadliest and most dangerous creatures in the entire jungle. Typical anacondas can weigh over 500 pounds, or 227 kilograms. The team took pictures for the record, but needed four men just to lift the snake. Number 9. The Deadly Piranha One of the strangest and most dangerous creatures in the Amazon is actually a fish, believe it or not. Of course, I'm talking about the vicious piranha. While animals like the anaconda get all the attention for being voracious killers, snakes don't actually attack that many people in the Amazon, while piranhas are responsible for hundreds of reported attacks per year, according to Forbes magazine, and potentially thousands of attacks that go unreported. The piranha is a fish that is categorized by its razor-sharp teeth that can bite through nearly any living thing. They usually swim in swarms, and so when they eat, they will come together to literally pick the bones clean, regardless of what has fallen into the water, thus making them one of the most aggressive and merciless things on Earth. Piranhas prefer to go after prey that is already weak, and that way they can't resist the swarm descending on them and killing them. It should also be noted that there isn't a single species of piranha. There are actually several within the Amazon. This is important because not all piranha species are full-on meat-eaters. Some are herbivores, some are omnivores, and yes, some are meat-eaters purely, like the red-bellied piranha, which are the most dangerous of them all. One of the biggest dangers with fishing in the Amazon is accidentally hooking a piranha on the end of your line and trying to get it off, at which point you could lose a finger. Of course, a piranha will bite your face off, but if you get into a tangle with one, even out of the water, you could at least lose some small piece of your hand. That being said, fishing and catching piranhas is a lot like fishing and catching any other fish, except you're in the deadly Amazon. Number 8. Creepy Alien Fish While on a fishing trip in the Colombian Amazon, a number of tourists caught what has been described as the ugliest fish ever reeled in. Nobody could believe it when one of the tourists captured a strange, white fish that honestly looks like it came from an alien planet. The fishy monster could not be identified right away. Everyone looking at it had no idea what their eyes were seeing. It was totally unlike anything the fishermen had ever encountered before. They didn't even know if they should touch it, because it looked as if it had pointy fins that could be filled with poison. Probably a safe bet. In the end, the tourists threw it back in the river because it was so terrifying, and there wasn't much they could do with it. It wasn't until later that they found out that it was a type of pleco fish, albeit a very rare pleco fish because of its white coloring. It may have been an albino, which is why it looks so bizarre. Plecos are armored catfish native to the Amazon. They can be found all throughout the rivers and channels of the jungle and are known for being wildly aggressive. They're usually not very big, only about two feet, but the one caught by the tourists was a certifiable giant at over three feet or almost one meter long. What would you do if you caught an alien fish like this? Let me know in the comments section below, and if you're liking this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. Number 7. The Most Powerful Eel In shocking news, no pun intended, Scientists have caught two of the world's most electrifying electric eels in the Amazon. Until recently, scientists didn't know there were other species of electric eel. They assumed there was just one, which had a record of producing up to 650 volts. This newest eel, called the Electrophorus voltai, is able to produce an incredible 860 volts, enough to seriously cripple a person and cause them to drown. The newest discovery just goes to show how diverse the rainforest really is and how much scientists still don't understand. 
Research was done by David DeSanta with the Smithsonian National Museum of Natural History. Researchers had to collect 107 samples from electric eels throughout the Amazon to properly differentiate the species. Oh, and a super fun fact. Electric eels are not actually eels. They are fish. They generate electricity by using specialized organs, usually to defend themselves or to incapacitate prey. If you happen to meet one of these electric eels in the Amazon, you better get out of the water before it zaps you, constricting your muscles and causing you to float helplessly to the bottom, where you might just end up getting eaten by piranhas. Number six, Jau catfish. One of the truest monsters of the Amazon is the legendary Jau catfish. This thing is an absolute beast and can grow to be a very real giant in the water. On a recent fishing expedition to the Amazon in Bolivia, an angler named Martin caught a Jao catfish weighing over 170 pounds. That's heavier than most people and would take a small group of fishermen just to haul into the boat. The Amazon guide said that after 200 fishing trips along the river, this was the biggest Jao catfish he had ever seen and was around 60 pounds or 27 kilograms heavier than previous world records. But believe it or not, the Jao catfish is only one of many catfish found throughout the rivers of the Amazon. The biggest one is the Paraiba catfish, with some reports claiming it can grow to be upwards of 400 pounds. That's a catfish so big that it could theoretically eat a person, or at least a child, if given the opportunity. These are not easy fish to catch and have insane strength, like Japanese sumo wrestlers. Okay, that's an odd comparison, but you get it. Think about trying to pull a sumo into your boat using a fishing line. Is that even possible? Number five, mythical pink dolphins. Okay, this one isn't actually a strange catch. It would just be strange and wrong if someone ever did try to catch it. There is one animal roaming the Amazon River more mystical and elusive than any other, and almost never seen by humans. It's called the Amazon Pink River Dolphin, and it's notoriously difficult to catch sight of. It also looks quite different from most dolphins you're familiar with. Instead of gray skin, it has pink skin. It also has an odd, prolonged snout. These dolphins are really toothed whales, growing up to nearly 10 feet or 3 meters long and weighing roughly 350 pounds or 160 kilograms. They also live for up to 30 years. Why do these dolphins have pink skin? Interestingly enough, they're actually born gray and then they turn pink and blotchy as they reach adulthood with males turning the pinkest. Pink river dolphins also have the biggest brains of any other dolphin. And unlike dolphins from other parts of the world, these ones aren't hunted. They're considered mythical throughout parts of South America, with locals having a deep respect for them. You'll never catch someone trying to hook a river dolphin. It's considered seriously bad luck. Number four, Amazon vampires. The payata, also known as the vampire fish, is one of the deadliest catches a person can make in the Amazon. It's wildly popular with tourists who visit Colombia to fish the rarest and most intriguing river predators. The payata is a type of dog-toothed tetra, though far larger and more vicious than the fish you'll find at your local pet store. The vampire fish also goes by the nicknames saber-toothed tigerfish and water wolf. It will literally gobble up piranhas for breakfast. They live in the fastest and wildest parts of the rivers where they're extremely tough to catch, making them a real challenge for even expert anglers. They're also super aggressive and really fast. They are notorious for continuously hunting and ripping bait off the ends of fishing lines. The average payata can grow up to three feet with a pair of spiked fangs that curve out of its lower jaw like an upside-down vampire. According to the International Game Fish Association, the biggest payata ever caught was in Venezuela back in 1996, weighing nearly 40 pounds or 18 kilograms. And considering these are basically extra-sized piranhas, 40 pounds, 18 kilograms is a truly monstrous fish. Number three, the deadly Atapaima. The Atapaima is a huge, savage, hungry, and truly fierce fish living in the Amazon. 
It's known for having such unfettered power that it can headbutt somebody so hard that their heart stops. Though this isn't something that happens all that often. The autopyma grows upwards of 400 pounds with a total length of around 10 feet or a little over 3 meters. And while the autopyma is a true Amazonian legend, it was recently spotted far from its home in Florida of all places. A giant autopyma was caught in the Caloosahatchee River, shocking local fishing guides and spurring panic. According to fishing captain Mike Smith from North Fort Myers, there are almost certainly more lurking about. It's doubtful that only one autopyma found its way to Florida all the way from South America. And for that matter, just how did such a dangerous sea serpent get to Florida in the first place? The only thing that makes sense is that someone tried to raise one of these Amazonian monsters at home, then didn't have room for it, and dumped it in a river somewhere. The dangerous part is if the autopyma somehow meets another, and they start breeding, before anyone knows what's happening, Florida rivers are just as dangerous as those in the Amazon. Number 2. The Rio Apaporis Cayman Deep in the jungles of Colombia is a part of the Amazon controlled by a violent rebel group. A cayman, once thought to be extinct for over 40 years, was recently discovered by wildlife biologist Forrest Galante. It's called the Rio Apaporis Cayman, and one hasn't been seen since the 1980s. This cayman has a unique snout and weirdly yellow skin, making it significantly different from any other crocodilian on this planet. Catching the cayman was no easy feat. Galante had to go deep into parts of the jungle controlled by drug lords and lawlessness, rife with guerrilla warfare. But oddly enough, it was actually the volatility of the region that kept the caiman and other exotic species safe, since people don't really go into the area. Galante and his team were the first foreigners to go into the jungle there in over 30 years. They caught not just one, but several Rio Apaporis caimans, proving that they still thrive in this exceptionally secluded part of the Amazon. And this is good news, seeing as they have a unique evolutionary lineage going back 7 million years. Hopefully they make a comeback and spread into more parts of the jungle. Number 1. Colombian Stingray One of the biggest and most fierce stingrays in the world can be found in the Amazon. It's a freshwater stingray that lives on the bottom of the rivers deep in the jungle, known as a discus ray. There was a shocking story a few years ago that one of these stingrays grew to be so huge that it killed a local woman and took off with her body. To investigate the claims, Jeremy Wade from River Monsters went into the jungle to check it out. What he caught was a discus ray so big and so heavy that it very easily could have killed a person. Jeremy actually needed to use the same rod that he'd used before to catch the huge autopyma. The stingray did not give up without a fight, and when Jeremy finally caught it, the slippery ray turned out to be an extremely massive creature, though it never was confirmed if the stingray ever dragged that woman out into the river. At over 5 feet or 1.5 meters in width and 240 pounds or 110 kilograms in weight, it certainly could have. The ray's barb could have gotten stuck in the woman's flesh, and when it swam upriver, it could have accidentally taken her with it. Thanks for watching. Which one of these creatures is the most strange or scary to you? Would you dare go fishing in the Amazon? Number 10. Nazi Wreckage The wreckage of a German steamship destroyed in war has recently been found by divers. The steamship had been sunk at the very end of the war. It's not the wreckage itself, though, that's so amazing, but rather the crates discovered in the jumbled mess of the broken ship. The crates appear as though they could be filled with treasure stolen from the Amber Room, which lies inside a Russian palace. German soldiers invaded in 1941 and must have taken the loot for themselves. The shipwreck was found just off the coast of Poland at a depth of only 290 feet or 88 meters. That's actually quite shallow for a shipwreck from World War II. The ship itself is called the SS Kofura, and in April of 1945, 
It was part of a German evacuation from East Prussia, as the few remaining Nazis tried to abandon ship. Historians have suspected for quite some time the treasure from the Amber Room was on the vessel when it fled and then later sank. The treasures had once beautifully decorated a room of pure amber at Catherine Palace on the edge of St. Petersburg. The Russians had actually stolen the idea to do this from the Germans, who had already made a room of amber at the Charlottenburg Palace. Maybe the Germans felt entitled to it? The Russians put over six tons or 12,000 pounds of amber into the room along with treasures that are worth around $500 million today. It's not clear if the Amber Room treasures are inside the shipwreck, but experts are pretty hopeful. We just have to wait until they retrieve the crates out of the ocean and see. Number 9. Leftover Bombs Two men who were trying to build a map of World War II unexploded ordnance have been killed by the very explosives that they were trying to keep the public safe from. This happened to two aid workers in the Solomon Islands. The Solomon Islands is a nation covered in unaccounted for and unexploded bombs from World War II. The aid workers were trying their best to find out where all the deadly munitions were so that they could clean the place up and detonate all the bombs safely. Not the safest of jobs. Well, the men got a bit more than they bargained for after they found a live bomb, took it to the house they were living in, and then got blown up. According to the New York Times, these guys were not supposed to take bombs home with them. Even those who were very close to the men didn't understand what they were thinking. Stephen Atkinson from Britain and Trent Lee from Australia have been described as devoted professionals. But alas, one wrong move spelled the end for them. We don't know what kind of bomb they found, and maybe they thought they could get rid of it themselves for some reason. But in the end, the bomb blew them up and both men died. Number 8. Playing in the Backyard A young boy in Denmark was just trying to do his history homework when he stumbled upon an amazing relic from World War II buried in his own backyard. It all happened after the kid's dad suggested they search the backyard for war artifacts to help with his assignment. What neither of them realized at the time was that a German Messerschmitt fighter plane had crashed on their farm in 1944. They searched the grounds with a metal detector and were shocked to discover a huge collection of metal right under their feet. They used an excavator to dig and discovered a plane. They dug the plane out, which ended up being only 20 feet or about 6 meters beneath their feet the entire time they'd lived in their house. The plane was broken up into tons of pieces when they found it, and definitely not salvageable. But even more amazing is that they also found the dead pilot's bones, his ruined clothing, and the guy's wallet. His wallet even still had money in it. If I were that kid's history teacher, I would be giving him an A plus for sure. Have you ever found something cool buried in your backyard? Let me know if you have in the comments section below, and if you're liking this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. Number 7. World War II Battleship The USS Nevada was a battleship from World War II that was recently discovered 70 nautical miles or 112 kilometers from Pearl Harbor, resting at the bottom of the ocean at a depth of over 15,000 feet. That's almost 3 miles or 4.8 kilometers. The USS Nevada was commissioned in 1916 and served at Pearl Harbor. The battleship even survived up to 10 blasts and a torpedo impact during the attack on December 7, 1941. But unlike many other ships, it didn't sink that day. It was actually repaired and went on to participate in the deadly invasion of Normandy in 1944. Using its huge 5-inch or 12-centimeter and 14-inch or 36-centimeter guns, to batter the German defenses as American soldiers stormed the beaches. Later, the battleship joined the invasions of Okinawa and Iwo Jima in Japan. Then, at the very end of the war, as the battleship neared the end of its life, the army used it as a target in some of their first atomic bomb tests at Bikini Atoll. The ship was still afloat even after getting hit by two atomic bombs, but it was then rendered radioactive, towed to Pearl Harbor, and used as target practice, then eventually hit by an aerial torpedo and purposely sank. This thing sure did take a beating throughout its life. 
but the Navy never recorded the exact coordinates of where it sank, making the recent discovery of the battleship at the bottom of the ocean quite impressive. Number 6. Hidden Air Raid Shelter During the coronavirus pandemic lockdown in England, a grandfather, Kandu Patel, discovered an air raid shelter hidden underneath his lawn. He had been living in his house for 40 years and never had a clue. According to the grandfather himself, he always wondered why there was a manhole cover in his yard, but he never bothered investigating. Then, being bored with the pandemic, he and a friend decided to lift the manhole cover and see what was underneath. They were shocked to discover what looked like a ceiling of concrete. They had to break through the concrete, at which point they discovered a staircase leading down to a secret air raid shelter. From what experts can tell, the shelter was probably used during the war to keep the local neighbors safe during German bombings. Then, for whatever reason, it was covered up and abandoned, with the only evidence of its existence being a measly manhole cover. Now Patel plans to turn the air raid shelter into a bar for him and his family to enjoy. I like the way this guy thinks. What would you turn it into? Number 5. Metals in the Dumpster A dumpster diver in Hickory, North Carolina discovered the legacy of a war hero. The hero's name was Donald Helfer, and he flew in 28 missions during World War II and was decorated for his outstanding bravery. He got a Navy Flying Cross and a Bronze Star. He even got a letter straight from the president of the time, Harry Truman, expressing gratitude for helping to defeat the enemy. But Helfer never told his family about what he'd done in the military. He buried his past and became a police officer in New York before retiring to Florida and passing away in 1993. His kids never really knew who he was. Then, along comes a dumpster diver who discovered Helfer's medals, his photos and identification, and his military records amongst a heap of garbage. They were probably discarded by whoever found them while sorting through his late wife's estate and decided to just toss them in the trash. But the dumpster diver recognized their worth, he sought out an American Legion post, and turned them over. Helfer's daughter, Linda DeLore, was eventually contacted and she made the long drive out to pick up her dad's belongings. Linda found herself amazed as she turned the pages of the neatly organized binder the man had put together containing her father's precious photos and mementos. There were pictures she had never seen before. DeLore also got to see a picture of her grandfather. History was unfolding right before her eyes. Now that the treasure has been restored to her family, Linda plans to share it with her relatives as soon as she's able. Suffice to say, it was a very emotional trip. Number 4. Lost Submarine In 1943, the USS Grenadier submarine was attacked by Japanese bombers and scuttled. The crew members were taken by the Japanese soldiers and tortured at a prison camp for over two incredibly long years which must have felt like centuries for the men. The ship had a very violent and tragic history and was ultimately lost. But recently, about 90 miles or 145 kilometers from Thailand, some divers stumbled upon this very ship over 200 feet or 60 meters below the water, 77 years after it was submerged. The wreckage is now rich in marine life and hardly looks like a weapon of war. There's algae all over it, and it's even covered in dirty old fishing nets. But how did the ship go down in the first place? According to the New York Times, it was April 20th when they were attacked by a Japanese plane, forcing them to go down 267 feet or 81 meters below the surface. The hole and hatches were leaking. A fire had broken out, and they were in pretty rough shape. Two days later, they were struck again. They had no choice but to quickly destroy their coding machine with hammers, get rid of all of their important data, and scuttle the ship. 76 members of the crew survived, though what followed were two years of beatings, burnings, breakings, and other unspeakable horrors. Number 3. Live Explosions Carl Peterson was checking out his grandfather's war collection when he discovered something quite shocking. What Carl found inside the box of World War II memorabilia caused the evacuation of almost an entire street in the High Springs area. Carl's grandfather had sent the box back home from the last ship he was on during the war. 
and among some fairly normal memorabilia, there were also two live Japanese knee mortars that had been sitting there for 75 years. The box had been kept in the family shed, and nobody had any idea that the box could have blown up at any minute. Carl phoned the police, and they called the bomb squad, and the situation was diffused, no pun intended. Carl was able to keep the box of artifacts, which included signal cards, old war rations, and even Japanese cigarettes sent home by his grandfather. The bombs, on the other hand, were confiscated. Why his grandfather thought it would be okay to keep knee mortars in the shed is still a bit of a mystery. Number 2. Lost Enigma Machine It was in 2020 that German divers commissioned by the World Wildlife Foundation went to the Baltic Sea to extract abandoned fishing nets from the seafloor. While they were cleaning up the water and getting rid of those pesky nets, they stumbled upon an extremely rare machine used by the Germans during the Second World War. It was an Enigma machine, one of the rarest artifacts from the war. When the Germans realized that they were losing, they began destroying all of their code machines and throwing them overboard from any vessel that were out at sea. They desperately wanted to keep the codes and the technology away from the Allied forces. Historians believe this Enigma machine was probably thrown over the side of a vessel where it had been left to rot on the seafloor ever since. The encryption device itself was invented in 1919 by a Dutch national named Hugo Koch. He had invented the machine for business purposes. But once the German army got a hold of it, they modified the machine and turned it into the most notorious code-sending contraption in all of history. The artifact has since been handed over to an archaeology museum in Germany, where it will be restored and then put on display for the public. Number 1. The Bucket List The final story today isn't exactly about something discovered, at least not in the usual way. In Maryland, a veteran from World War II has finally crossed something off of her bucket list. She worked up the courage to finally go skydiving at the ripe old age of 102. She was apparently inspired by President George H.W. Bush, who did the same thing when he was 90. But she beat him by 12 years. Let this be a heartfelt lesson for everyone that it's never too late to live your dreams. Vivian Bailey joined the Army and had become a second lieutenant by 1943. Nearly 80 years later, she discovered her youth by jumping out of an airplane. Thanks for watching. Have you ever found a World War II treasure? Let me know about it in the comments and be sure to hit that subscribe button for more awesome videos from the channel. See you next time. Bye bye.